The next ISU Congress can only be compared in predictability with the Olympic victory of Nathan Chen. Few doubted that the age limit for athletes would be raised, officials would be left in force, which means they would block the chance of re-election as vice president of Alexander Lakernik, and the suspension of the Russian national team would be extended. Every two years, the ISU tries to make figure skating more popular by considering hundreds of amendments, most of which are made, it seems, only so that their authors can justify their trip to Fucat or Seville. You can't refuse the taste preferences of functionaries. But the main changes are needed not by sport, but by the federation itself. One of the key problems of the ISU is the very idea of combining three sports that are connected only by ice. Everything else is very different from the ways of monetization. Have you seen a show of skaters skating under Bylan with Bieber for a long time or a downfall for a short tracker? And the format of the arenas to the audience, interest in different countries and the balance of forces of the federations. In 2003, figure skating was already trying to separate into an independent federation, six revolutionaries, there were no Russians among them, but there were two Americans at once, announced a press conference on the creation of a new organization during the World Cup. The separatist leader sent a fax to the IOC, in which he criticized the ISU and asked to recognize the new federation as independent. The riot was promptly suppressed, the IOC president refused to meet with the revolutionaries, and the ISU suspended them from work and threatened sanctions to those athletes who would support the changes. In response, the self-proclaimed federation filed a lawsuit against the ISU with accusations of monopolization of sports. One of the arguments against the ISU was precisely that President Otavio Cinquanta, as a skating specialist, cannot make decisions in the field of figure skating. In addition, in the lawsuit, former ISU functionaries claimed that he takes kickbacks from television companies. The case was never considered due to a violation of jurisdiction, and the illegal federation dissolved itself. Cinquanta remained president of the ISU until 2016, when he was replaced by Jan Dakima, who also gravitated to speed skating. The new president Kim Jae-il, who was elected at the last Congress, is from Korea, where short track is now clearly a priority over figure skating. Attempts to glue three different sports together with universal reforms clearly do not work. The age limit was raised primarily due to the too obvious dominance of young singles, but in order to avoid accusations of discrimination, similar rules were adopted for short track skaters with skaters. Extremely sluggish attempts to popularize figure skating by the ISU have led to the fact that the Federation's budget is in deep deficit. In an attempt to save the situation, the Congress expanded the number of participants in the World Cup by introducing a qualification round, this will attract new countries and therefore take membership fees from them. There is an important detail in the audit report for 2021. The ISU saved more than it lost on the cancellation of competitions due to the pandemic. Yes, one. Eight million Swiss francs were burned due to the loss of income from the sale of TV rights and advertising but 2.7 million were saved without paying prize money to participants in compensation to the host countries. ISU saved another 2.5 million by curtailing sports promotion programs, as well as various training seminars and media activities. As a result, it is easier for officials to cancel the tournament at the slightest suspicion of any problem than to save it and hold it without spectators or postpone it to another date. The winner in the confrontation of smallpox monkeys against the calendar of figure skating competitions is obvious already now. At the Congress 2022, it turned out that the ISU budget remains in deficit, despite the gradual lifting of COVID restrictions. Projected expenditures over three years will exceed revenues by 22.73 million Swiss francs, 1.4 billion rubles. Back in 2019, the Federation was in the black by 2 million francs. It is obvious that the ISU simply does not have the money for really important reforms. The division of judges into two brigades, technical and component, was blocked four years ago when the budget was in surplus. In 2022, the reform was postponed again, optimizing the work of arbitrators by reducing the components of the second assessment. The lack of money clearly stops technical progress, both in judging and in broadcasts. 
some enthusiasts like the Japanese are testing their achievements at domestic starts or home world championships, but at all other tournaments, the referees still justify mistakes with unsuccessful angles, and the evaluation system hangs on the rental leaders. It is obvious that figure skating is not the easiest sport to develop, it is expensive, traumatic and requires specific infrastructure, which is not available in every country. Whatever the age limit, it will not increase the career of athletes to the performance of tennis or fencing. Meanwhile, it is the transparency and objectivity of judging that could make figure skating a much more popular sport, designed not only for esthetes who remember by heart all Lambiel's programs and the sequence of steps in Voliva's tracks. The current system is extremely unfriendly to new fans who find it difficult to grasp why the scores for visually identical rentals, depending on the warm-up and the flag on the jacket, may differ by tens of points, and the conditional Trusova with dirty rental receives components of the level of the pure Moon Hendrix. In the election program of the new ISU president, a separate section is devoted to technology and innovation. But for some reason, as an example, it is not software for evaluating undercools or improving the quality of video replays, but the establishment of a new World Ice Skating Day holiday by analogy with Winter Sports Day. Another scourge of ISU is inconsistency. Perhaps, by constantly updating the rules, officials are trying to increase the rotation of champions and create the appearance of dynamic development, but some solutions, for example, a constant game with a base cost and criteria for the quality of elements look like changes for the sake of changes. The paradox is that no one devalues the winners more than the federation itself. By limiting the bonus allowances for jumps in the second half of the program six months after Zajitova's victory, increasing the age limit after three consecutive minor Olympic champions and focusing on the allowances for those technical shortcomings that Sturbakova and Boliva were approached with, Isu gives a clear signal, these are the wrong winners. There is something hypocritical in introducing rules against new champions and at the same time declaring a struggle for long careers. It would be possible to detain the winners on the ice by motivating them with professional and semi-professional tournaments. Gordiva and Grinkov, for example, having rebooted in this format, returned to amateur sports and won the second Olympiad. But the Federation obviously does not have the money to hold them, and any attempt by private enthusiasts to occupy this niche is likely to end with a ban for those skaters who will exchange official competitions for similar show formats. Why should Nathan Chen stay in the sport, who dominated for four years in a row, taking out any rivals by dozens of points? In order to get in shape, put on programs and face another hasty cancellation of competitions? What is the point of Papadakis and Cicerin competing if ISU is clearly preparing the ground for a change of leaders, reducing the importance of technique and rhythm dance? The Federation does not even fight for Hania, whose fans are ready to provide a salt out at any tournament with his participation and therefore bring new sponsors. By a simple bureaucratic move raising the cost of the quadruple axle, they could stimulate its study with something other than the frenzied enthusiasm of Yuzuru. Instead, the ISU went the most banal way, raising the age limit to 16 in the 2023-24 season and 17 in the 2024-25 season. One of the main victims of the reform is Sofia Akativa, who was born seven days later than the date from which the Federation counts the beginning of the new season, which means age restrictions. However, even a delayed entry to the adult level will not prevent her from winning the Olympics, provided that she remains motivated without international competitions. As well as it will not hurt to finish with sports immediately after such a victory, leveling all the efforts of the ISU to extend the championship careers. Perhaps the reform will really reduce the injury rate in women's singles, although this is doubtful, Ultra C have become too commonplace, and in order to do them at the games at 17, you will have to start at 12-13. But if the ban of the Russian national team is delayed, it will be impossible to assess the impact of the exclusive qualification on the number of quads. The ban of Russian athletes and tournaments will be another test of ISU's strength. Although Russia will continue to pay membership fees, since no one has excluded it from the federation, it will not accept the Grand Prix stage, and the list of applicants for its holding is quite limited, will not bring new sponsors, and will not purchase television rights. 
the quad shorts will become a product of internal use, and the competition in pair skating at the European Championships will be reduced to the level of the middle of the last century. And it seems that the ISU does not yet fully understand what to do with it.